Does our growth performance over the last 40 years imply increased female labor force participation? The participation of female in the labor force of Bangladesh has increased since its independence, comprising of almost 50% of the population. However, still, large part of them have long been outside the labor force count, much of their contribution to the GDP unaccounted for. Over the past three decades, Bangladesh has experienced significant rise in economic growth rate. However, question remains whether the growth process has been inclusive as far as females' participation in the growth process is concerned. When we talk about uh, inclusive growth in Bangladesh, it is important to understand a major aspect of inclusive growth, which is actually the, coming from the gender perspective. We talk about a large part of the population who remain outside of the labor market in Bangladesh. Actually, the female labor force participation we are talking about. We have seen that uh, for the last decade and 15 years, the labor force participation of women in Bangladesh has increased um, from around 8% you know, in the mid-1980s to now about 33%. So, uh, it's clearly a steady rise in female labor force participation in a country where traditionally women's workforce participation has been pretty low. So this is an achievement. The, the trend has been in a slow and steady rise in female labor force participation. Not only in terms of female labor force participation, also in terms of the educational achievement and social position of the woman, that has also been improved. One important thing we need to understand when we talk about female labor force participation is about the quality of their participation. Because the data shows that though despite the fact that the female they have part increased their participation in the labor market, a large part of them actually they remain within what we call the unpaid family labor. The unpaid female worker was comprised of 34% of total female employment in Bangladesh in the year of 2000. It has risen to, to 56% in 2010. The concentration of uh, unpaid female worker was always greater in the rural part of Bangladesh. Uh, in the labor poor survey, it was about 37% uh, in 2000 and it has risen to 57% in 2010. So from that point of view, we can say that um, these unpaid family work, or, or that means like they are mainly engaged as uh, assistant to their uh, to their to their father or their brothers or their husband's land or uh, they are uh, they are working as rearing uh, animals or helping in the agricultural activities so all of these activities a significant proportion of females are uh, engaged we have found from the labor poor survey that among the married female worker it was about 59 percent who were unpaid we have also found that among the unpaid worker uh, who are female, there is a big portion who have attained primary or secondary education, though uh, the female with no education was always the greatest portion when it comes to unpaid work. So the policy can suggest how this portion of a female worker can be transformed into paid worker and make the best use of their education. When it is unpaid family labor, then actually they are not participating in the wage employment and when it comes to their welfare, their improvement in their well-being, their empowerment, then there remains a big question to what extent, the, even, even if the fact that female labor force participation has increased in Bangladesh, to what extent it actually empowered women. So that remains a big question. And it is important to understand what are the factors which determine the female labor force participation in Bangladesh. Studies have indicated that there are certain micro factors like education, family size, dependency ratio, household's uh, income level, they affect uh, female labor force participation. Also, there are certain macro indicate or determiners like growth of certain industries, they also affect female labor force participation. There are some other social factors. So it is a bit difficult to capture the social factor, but for example, if, if you try to look at the um, family position of the of the woman so their household education their occupational occupational structure so we may get some sort of idea about the determinant so uh, we have 
done some surveys and a lot of surveys have been done, a lot of analysis have been conducted and all of these analyses have more or less indicate that um, the factors which are the household factors like the children or the marital status, these are very important, especially if the women have children who are below six years or below four years. So that adds a lot of burden to their household activities and because of that we find that uh, that is affecting quite significantly to their labor force participation. Then another factor is uh, 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 the factors related to the household characteristics and if we look at the household characteristics then a uh, lot of factors which are uh, the household education, household the type of activities that the household are doing. So these are the factors that are also affecting. One of the major factors which can really help female labor, female to participate more effectively in the labor market is actually education. And uh, studies from Bangladesh and different countries, they have shown that increased education of the female, they can help a lot uh, for female to participate more effectively in the labor market. And also there is another factor which is actually how the economy or the government or the system, the society taking care of what we call the bigger care economy or care service. Because if you have a higher dependency ratio in the household and also if you have a high, large family size, then the female they are forced to remain within the household and there are some of these constraints that you know they don't let female to participate effectively in the labor market what policies could be taken to improve the female labor force participation one important aspect we have found in our studies that social protection different kinds of social protection programs can really help then of course education uh, increased education of the female and different kinds of training program which can really help female to participate in the labor market. And finally, I think which is very important, how the government or the society is taking care of the so-called care service or care economy. You know, you need to have different daycare service for the children, for and also different services for the elderly, so that the female, they are not really forced to remain within the household to take care of children and elderly, and then they can come out of the household and participate more effectively in the labor market. So in terms of policy, I think uh, if we want to see uh, you know, women participating in greater numbers in the labor market, and we certainly do because education levels are rising and aspirations are rising, families want to have their children educated, they want better health, aspirations are rising, so women need to be able to earn income. But with government policies and private sector policies need to support that. And one way of supporting is really to provide some sort of uh, support in terms of care responsibilities. So that is an important policy area that I think both private sector and government need to work on. Um, the other is actually giving, you know, women work often in isolation and what women need is really networking and associations and that increases their bargaining power, particularly for women doing home-based work in the, in the house through, um, which is sometimes no called self employed which is again a rise we see. And there I think it's the need for associations would be to be able to raise women's bargaining power with um, agents through which they actually get to work. So I think these are two areas in terms of policy where I feel that a lot can be achieved to support women's labor force participation. Tanam has been working on these issues related to female labor force participation in Bangladesh. We are doing two different things. One big component of our work, actually, we, we are doing with IDRC Canada, one big research component, where we're looking at what are the factors affecting the labor market, the linkage between labor market and growth in Bangladesh. And a couple of uh, research papers are doing how female labor force participation, what are the factors affecting female labor force participation, and what are the policies can help female to participate more in the labor market. So that is one research component we are doing. But another one uh, we are doing with the help from Institute of Labor Studies of Germany, we are actually experimenting uh, a randomized control trial in Gaibandha where we are trying to provide training uh, to the uh, rural women, poor women, on the re related to ready-made garments uh, works. And then we are trying to see how different training programs can help 
those uh, poor uh, rural women to participate in the remade garment sectors. So these are the two important things we are doing. And then we are also not doing the research or kind of uh, control, randomized control trial experiment. We are also doing a lot of work on the communication front as well. Apart from the intensive research work, Salim is also concentrating on its communication strategy to disseminate its research findings among the organization stakeholders. Since June 2014, Sanem has started publishing a monthly newsletter titled Thinking Aloud to communicate more effectively with different organizations and individuals. There has also been a special issue of Thinking Aloud on female labor force participation in Bangladesh. And in that newsletter, uh, the research findings along with the overall scenario of female labor force participation in our country have been depicted. And this is the very first uh, episode of Sanem's series of video documentaries. And this is on female labor force participation. So we can say that this video is a manifestation of Sanem's research work on the dynamics of female labor force participation in Bangladesh.